Hello, nerds! Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is Renaissance Nerd, the show where we get nerdy about food. This month, we are doing our homage to Dr. Seuss with our Roast Beast. Uh, in this video, we are going to be doing the side dish for the Roast Beast, and that side dish is actually a twofer. We're doing two side dishes. Mashed potatoes, it's going to be a little bit different than last month's mashed potatoes because they, they're serving a different purpose. And we're going to be roasting up a butternut squash. Here we have our ingredients. First up is the potatoes, and then the squash, a little bit of granulated garlic, add a little bit of salt as well, and there, one stick of butter, two sticks of butter, one for each of the potatoes and the squash, and then some half and half. I mean, you can use heavy cream or whole milk, or whatever kind of milk you prefer, or sour cream. First things first for the side, we have to get those potatoes ready because that's going to be the most like actual prep time that we're going to need for, for these sides. The rest of it's going to be as we go. So just like last time, we need to wash these potatoes. This is a little bit better view than the last video though. So washing potatoes, really super simple, nothing special. Just make sure you get all the dirt off. If you have a veggie scrubber, then by all means use it. I don't have a veggie scrubber and it's not 100% necessary. Uh, just as long as you get all of the dirt off and all of the eyes should your potatoes be sprouting eyes. Speaking of, there are some eyes right there. Kind of hard to see because these were pretty new potatoes. But uh, they're, they come off real simple, so no worries. And then just clean those bad boys. Uh, we are again going to be peeling the potatoes, uh, though I'm going to restate that if you leave the skins on, it is better for you. Uh, again, I'm not making these just for myself, and my girlfriend pre prefers them to be peeled, so I peel them. Uh, it, the, I, there's actually a difference in flavor if you leave the skins in too. And you can even, uh, just to, for a difference in texture, peel them and then keep the peels and put those in and then it'll be, instead of it being bits, there'll be long sh shredded strips of potato. And uh, the peel also helps with uh, getting the bad spots out, which we will get to once we start cutting these bad boys. And now we're going to be or once we start peeling rather. Here we go, peel. And again, very, very careful. This is a blade, regardless of how not sharp it may be. It is still a blade, it is still metal, and your skin is not immune to metal, so be careful. But you can see right there, there's a there's a bad spot. There's a couple of bad spots on this potato. And uh, the easiest way to get rid of them is to just peel them more. Uh, here at, at the ends will go faster and always when you're going fast you want to go away from your body if you're going towards your body it needs to be very very slow and controlled but here's those dead spots and so you get those guys out by just peeling a little bit more again away from your body when you're going fast but if you're if you're slower and controlled then by all means uh, whatever is the most comfortable for you just be being aware that it is possible to cut yourself regardless of which direction that blade is headed. You can potentially cut yourself, uh, so be very aware of the blade in your hand.
now that everything is peeled, let's get to the cutting. Again, just like last time, we're going for a relatively uniform size. We don't want them to be uh, too different in size. The more uniform they are, the more evenly they will cook. And I mean, you could make these into a really small dice, but that would just be a waste of time. It would technically cook faster because there's more surface area, um, but it's not anything super different in time. So just make them a uniform size. I usually quarter uh, a, a, a smaller tomato, a smaller potato. Oh, I got words. Usually quarter a smaller potato, but uh, and then, and then you make the larger potatoes into sixths, uh, but it's, it's kind of up to you. Quarters seem to work out the best, though. So that's all the cutting and stuff we have to do for the side dish, uh, at least for the moment. Before we can cut into this bad boy, we're gonna need to soften it up a little bit, cause this is pretty hard. Um, you can cut this in half right now and kind of save yourself a little bit of potential pain in the future. Uh, if your knife though is not super sharp, and since I'm not using my professional knives, I'm just using my regular old kitchen knives, um, you, you're gonna wanna soften this up a bit before you cut it in half. Um, and then there's gonna, there, basically the biggest part about this is the time it takes to roast. So this takes, this'll take about an hour and a half to roast up to where we want it. Um, but the butter's gonna help soften it up once we get it to that point. And mashing it up is gonna, is gonna help get it cooked nice and hot and, 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 and you'll see, it'll be, it'll be good. Uh, but next we have to season our potatoes for the mash. And then we have them in the, in the water. So now we're adding salt. That's about one tablespoon there. And then we're gonna do a second tablespoon. And then we're also going to do approximately a tablespoon of granulated garlic. There's the granulated garlic. Right into that water. Uh, the garlic is, when you add it at this stage, is relatively subtle. If you were to add it at the, uh, the, once it's cooked, then you would add significantly less and it would be a lot more pronounced flavor. Uh, this time we are kicking the potatoes on at full, so turn them on high. Preheat your oven to about 350. For this though, uh, the oven is up to about 500. Uh, this, <clears throat> the squash is going to take approximately, uh, an hour to 30, uh, 30 minutes to an hour to get to this point with it up as high as it was though. This took about uh, 20 minutes. I did, uh, it was only at 500 for about 10 of those 20 minutes and then it dropped down to 350. And we'll get into why all that is once we talk about the entree for this week. But that is what it should look like. You want it to be good and blistered, some some good brown color to it. it notice it is not quite as orange as when it went in. And then you set it down on your cutting board, give it a little bit of time to breathe because that is a really hot squash. <laughs> notice there I was testing it to see if I could touch it with my hand. You don't want it to cool down all the way because it is going to go right back into that oven. So. Use a towel if you have to, and you wanna cut it in half, and, and again, let it breathe. So there we are, cutting it in half. And then you scoop out the nasty bits. You want to get rid of the, the fibrous bits and the seeds right there in the heart. And then basically you just want to separate the meat from the skin, which is pretty simple. <laughs> I, uh, I was having a little bit of struggles with it just because I was balancing a bunch of different things going on, but it is really simple. 
you 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 can really honestly peel most of it off at once, and then you just have to scrape off the little bits that don't peel off very well. So. Yeah, get it into your bowl. Make sure this is an oven-safe bowl, and you want to break it up. You're, you're mashing it effectively. You don't need to use a masher. You can just use your serving spoon that you're going to be serving it with, but uh, definitely get that nice and broken up so that we can add our seasoning to it. And then butter is what we're adding as it goes back into the oven. This will help soften it. This is uh, going to add flavor. This is going to be all kinds of wonderful inside of this squash. Once we get the butter in there, we want to make sure it's good and broken up so that it melts evenly throughout the squash. Uh, don't worry too much about that because we will mix it up again. And then uh, we're going to cover it with foil so it can go back in the oven. And that it's, it's really that simple. And I almost forgot the gravy for the mashed potatoes. Thankfully, Megan came home and reminded me that I'm a dumbass. <laughs> so, gravy, just like we did for the shepherd's pie, we're going to do something very slightly different, but by and large, it's going to be basically the same. First off, we start with one of these Nor, uh, it's kind of washing out in the light. Let's, there you go. Uh, Nor stock capsules. These things, again, are amazing. This, it it's, takes two days to get something this fantastic if you were to make it yourself. So, seriously, that much time and space is very much worth the cost of these guys. Uh, so, this guy, a little bit of water, and then we're going to add, we're going to do a more proper roux this time because we're going to use some of the uh, drippings from the beef. Um, this is not something you can do ahead of time for prep. This is something you have to do because it, you need the droppings, right? Or the drippings. It's not droppings, that sounds like poop. So the drippings from the beef, uh, we're going to melt this guy first. No, I take that back. We're gonna do the roux first, and then we're gonna melt this guy into the roux with some water. All right, so to get the drippings from the roast beast, be very careful pulling this out of the oven. It is quite hot, <clears throat> and we'll get into the details of, of all, the, all that as we get to the entree, but don't do this that I'm doing on screen right now because that will happen. What you want to do is uh, get help if you can or one hand it and have another utensil to hold the beef so that it doesn't slip and slide like it just did for me. And then you want approximately a quarter cup uh, to a third of a cup-ish of the drippings because this is going to take place of the butter that you would normally use to build a roux. Put that roast back in the oven. Being very, very careful because it is very, very hot. And then we need to add our flour. You can turn, turn the, the burner on 
you're looking at about a medium to a low medium heat and then you add the approximately the same amount of flour as you did the fat from the roast uh, you can add it slowly it will help a little bit to, to keep it from clumping if you add it slowly so I don't add all of the flour immediately just a little bit at first mix it in with that fat from the roast and then we'll add a little bit more in a moment and there is that little bit extra to fill it out you want your roux to look like about uh, wet sand kind of consistency a little bit runnier than wet sand next we're going to be adding our nor uh, stock capsule that is that little guy right there once your roux has been well incorporated you add the nor and let that mix and you want to get that melted into your roux before we add the cream which is the next part so again your cream can be half and half or uh, the vitamin D milk just something with a good amount of fat any liquid you do add you want to do it slowly so that it can incorporate properly if you add it too fast then you'll it will clump and and so on so you want to again you want to make sure you add it good and slow so that it doesn't uh, it doesn't you, you it'll it'll be a grainy kind of texture that's that's the word I was looking for that way you don't get that grainy texture if you add your your liquid slowly to your roux and also make sure your liquid is good and cold uh, rule of thumb for roux is hot roux cold liquid hot liquid cold roux so if we were making a soup then we needed a roux and we were building around a hot liquid then we would refrigerate the roux before we added it to the soup this is the opposite uh, we are building our gravy around the roux so we have the roux first and then all of our flavor and liquid added after that a little bit of salt and you're good to go And you'll know that you are right on when it starts to coat the back of the spoon like a this. Now we are going to mash those potatoes uh, just like we did last time, only we cooked them slightly less this time so they're not as starchy. They, uh, the potatoes, you want to add your butter, you're gonna add your cream. You, this is the point where you would add the sour cream as well. If you want a little bit more garlic flavor, then add the garlic here. You don't need to add any salt because the granulated garlic has a, an element of sodium to it. So you should be good to go. And then just whatever you gotta do, to get it nice and blended or evenly whipped. I like to save myself a little bit of the trouble and use the beaters. Uh, it is possible to do this by hand. I have, again, had to do this by hand for a few different chefs uh, who I was working under. So this is totally a by hand process. It is possible if you have the beaters though, you might as well use them.
take a look at all that beautiful food. Uh, these are your side dishes. Enjoy. And those, nerds, are your side dishes for the roast beast. Our roasted butternut squash and our mashed potatoes and gravy. Uh, yeah, they are amazing. Made the gravy a little thick, but we'll get through it. All you need to do to, to work with that, and we'll get into this as we do the leftovers video, but just add a little bit of water. You can even add a little bit more of the drippings from the pan, and that will help with the thickness of the gravy. But thank you guys for watching. This has been Renaissance Nerd, right here on Generally Nerdy. If you like this video, definitely click the thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, click that subscribe button. There is more than just food over here on Generally Nerdy. If you want to support the channel, there's a website, generallynerdy.net. You can find links to the stores so you can get yourself one of these shirts or one of the other many shirts that we have up on the General Nerdy stores. And all of the freebies are up on the website, all of the social media links, so you can see all the pictures over on the Instagram, or the silly bits on the Twitter, not that I really use the Twitter that much, or the Facebook, there's a bunch of stuff up on the Facebook as well, so go check out all of that stuff. If you want to support the channel a little more directly, there is a Patreon page, patreon.com slash generally nerdy. That is where you can support more directly. Up there is all the breakdown for all the tiers and all the things you get when you start to subscribe on the different tiers. So check that out, Generally Nerdy, on Patreon, patreon.com slash generally nerdy. Before we do all of the things, before we go and do all the wonderfulness and click the buttons and go to the website, before we do any of that, guys, always, always remember that if it's generally nerdy, then it's probably here and we're gonna make some amazing food.